192, edging ever closer to 600. Can you believe it? It's the 12th of July, 2018. Welcome aboard. We've got a great show for you this week. We've got heaps of stories, uh, new products coming out that we're going to have a bit of a chat about. Uh, I don't know, I've got some personal stories to tell you about. Uh, nothing too intriguing, so settle down. And uh, yeah, and uh, the other guest hosts have got some stories as well, so we're all having some fun. It's uh, brought to you, we are brought to you by athwebhosting.com.au for some domain registrations, SSL certificates, some shared hosting goodness. You can uh, push in some WordPress, Joomla or Drupal. Just uh, get in there, a couple of clicks, a couple of pushes of the keyboard and you've got a, a WordPress installed ready to edit and, and get yourself up on the internet. Uh, you can find us on facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds and the youtube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds. Show notes are always at aussietechheads.com.au forward slash podcast. We, we are on the Twitter at Aussie Tech Eds, at Glenn Goodman, at Aussie Tech News, hashtag Oz Tech Heads. Other shows around to look out for the Aussie Mac Zone, My Tech Opinion, the Aussie Tech Crypto. Uh, so if you can get your heads around all of that, you're doing well. And also the Aussie Tech Radio, just punch it up onto your TuneIn Radio app, which is cross-platform, so download it. Or you can go to the AussieTechRadio.com if you want to just play it off the web page. You can do that too if you want. Uh, what you'll find there is uh, 24-7 Aussie podcasts, and they just play back-to-back for the week. Uh, new shows are coming up on Friday, so uh, tune in each Friday for the new shows. Just a little round-robin sort of thing. All right, cool. Let's have a... S- talk to the other hosts this week and coming up first is jordan how you going jordan hey mate how are you yeah good thanks what's uh news with you oh you know just the usual yep. just uh do, getting through the week as you do doing yep. what we can ah good stuff good stuff um and joe hey joe welcome back thank you how you going good good what's the news with you uh nothing much that's good. <laughs> nice and boring. How's the soccer going? The soccer, it's almost finished. We've got a couple of games to go. We've got the World Cup on Monday night. Yep. And we have the runners up on the Sunday night. Oh, right. And England's out. England's out. Oh, no. It's not coming home. That's no good. No. no. France <laughs> and uh, Croatia at the moment. <clears throat> I was... Uh, Talking to an Englishman today, and I said it's not coming home, is it? Because you know I've been so all I've been seeing on Facebook is it's coming home, it's coming home. <laughs> I said to him, "She's not coming home, is she?" And he goes, "Well, it's taking the scenic route. <laughs> it won't be this year, but it'll be maybe another couple of years." So anyway, uh, yeah. So yeah, how long's it got to go, Joe? How many more late nights you got in 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 front of you? Oh, only a couple more now. Uh, well, like I said, Sunday night. Um, and Monday, the last two nights. Right, okay, that's good. And back to some sleep, back to some normality. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. All right, let's see what we've been up to this week with story wise. Oh, but I'll tell you, but first I'll tell you, I think a couple of weeks ago, did I go off on a tel- Telstra rant about my cable being down? I think I might have. Well, anyway, I did have a win. They, they rang me up and they said, what can we do? And I said, send me one of those modems with the 4G chip in it. And so I came yesterday, I installed it today. And oh, can you? I can't believe though, like how hard it is just to like activate this device. So these days, uh, I get a cable modem, what they call a cable adapter, which plugs into the the uh, cable in the wall. So from the wall, plugs in this cable adapter, which is used to be a you know just the modem thing, and then from the cable adapter. You got to Ethernet it into another device, which they call the modem, which is the Wi-Fi part of it. So now you got two devices instead of one. I don't know why they can't just push put one device around, but anyway. Uh, and then just trying to get that activated. Can you believe it took two hours? Two hours to get this thing activated. So um, it's just crazy. And on the phone for most of it. And it's just um, I don't know what what they were doing, and you know just on hold for most of that time. But oh, it's just crazy. But anyway, it's it's going. So it's all going, and what happens is, so I tested it, and I uh, pulled the cable out of the wall, and yeah, the 4G kicked in, took over. So it was really, very good, very, very good. So I don't get much speed out of the 4G. It is limited to six down, one up, but anyway, that's as much as I used to get on the old ADSL, so that's, you know, you take the good with the bad. As long as it doesn't go down, it'll keep the my in-house network you know, running and it, with say, at least some internet, so I don't have to hotspot. And uh, the data comes off my. If I use the 4G data, it comes off my home allowance. So that's a bit of a win-win there. I'm I'm happy with it. Uh, once it's set up, and now that it is set up, I'm yeah, all systems go. So that's good. 
And uh, but did someone here, did one of you guys have a Telstra story this week? Did someone mention Telstra just before? Yes, I got, I got a Telstra story. All right. Well, while we're talking about them, what's the Telstra story? Okay. Um, Telstra um, has notified us and said that they're switching on a new network to cope with uh, the growing demands of live um, sports. All right. That's good. So yeah. Apparently what's happening is that there's an, extra, an, an extraordinary amount of uh, video consumption being used on the mobile network. And um, to also say that their network has actually grown threefold since 2016. Yeah, right. So you know, when you include things like um, uh, AFL, NRL and uh, netball, mm. um, they're moving all their content over to apps that actually use um, the live stream. Right. So what are they What are they doing? They've got another... Uh, yeah, they've, they've got a new technology coming out called LTE-B. Right, yes. Right. So it's like um, LTE-B uh, stands for broadcast. So therefore, they're trying to... Um, the way the LTE works is that it... Uh, LTE-B works is that it sends uh, content via a single stream of data to right. many mobile users in the one area at the one time. Right. Um, the way it actually works now is that um, the individual content stream actually goes to each individual user, each device. Okay. Um, so therefore, the more people that are on that um, that stream, then it degrades the network. Yes, yes, right, right. So is this... Well, are they are they bringing that? When does that sort of appear? Is that... Well, it, it's just um, testing at the moment. Um, <clears throat> there's not many devices at the moment that actually can use that the the Galaxy S8 and the S9 have LTE dash B built into it. Yes. Okay. Uh, cool. So sorry, I was just a bit sorry, Joe. I was just a bit distracted, just looking at. I'm just making sure my mic was up enough. Uh, but yeah, so that's all right. So, so what? It's going to. Uh, is it going to work like on just only on certain phones? Is that what the story is? At the moment, yes. At the moment, it's only working on certain phones on the Galaxy S8 and Galaxy S9. Right. Um, in, you know how how sometimes you have sporting events and the. Um, they have to upgrade the bandwidth in that area. Like, mm. say, for example, the tennis, the Australian Open. Yes. There's a whole heap of people there. And what they have to do is they actually need to increase capacity to the whole area, so to speak, in order to to um, to enable everyone to be able to use their phone properly. Yeah. And stream, stream data and whatever else at the same time. Because I know I've been to a few concerts, uh, you know, like, like the, say, the Foo Fighters or whatever it is, and, yeah, you just can't get a signal. It's just, it's yeah, just dead. Well, the idea is that if you have one of these LTE dash B phones, um, this new technology that Telstra is bringing out, yep. the idea is that um, you won't have that problem anymore because they don't have to um, stream to each individual device. They just send it to the one area, mm. and then multiple people can actually log onto that device at the same time. Right, and is that well that that just setting the sport down it, or is that just a connection to any of everything, the whole network? Yeah, it's the whole. It's it's just a it, it, to the particular area only. So yes, they'll yep. still they'll still use LTE signals, but they they're going to introduce a new one called LTE dash B. It's like a broadcast. So it, it's not going to be used all the time. I think it'll be used mostly in special events. Mm. Yeah, okay. Well, that sounds pretty good. I guess the, all the other phones will more than likely start adopting that. As one, once it, once it's once the network's been built, the phones will follow. I guess. So, yeah, that's that's cool. That's good stuff. Um, now, what have I got here? I've got, yeah, look, I've got a Facebook story. I was down the, I was driving down Currumbin, uh, for those of you who know Currumbin, the other week, and I, I looked on the bus stop shelter there as I passed, and there was this Facebook sign. I thought, wow, how how unusual it is to see, say, like Facebook, just totally online business, and it's actually entered into advertising into the into the real world. I thought, how, how amazing is that? Uh, but what has happened? So I came home and sort of Googled it and tried to figure out what was going on. 
And what is going on is they've got this campaign. It's called Here Together. Uh, it's reached Australia. It's apparently uh, started in America and the UK and all this sort of stuff. But it's an eight-week campaign launched targeting Australian consumers. So this comes after 310,000 Australi- Australians may have had their data improperly shared with this Cambridge Analytica. So I think we all can remember Cambridge Analytica, uh, which had the which had all the, the big data breach back in April. Uh, I think it was April. Uh, As part of a broader communications campaign, Here Together has been launched to drive awareness of the changes Facebook has made to protect people's privacy, remove fake accounts from the platform and ensure people have a positive experience using the platform. So Facebook said, that was a statement from them, uh, and they went on to say, it's our responsibility to make sure Facebook is a place where everyone can stay closer with the people they care about and make it make sure it's a positive force in the world. We hope this campaign will show that we uh, take our responsibility seriously and are working to improve. So it looks like that this, you know, this data breach has probably really hurt them. You know, they've had to venture out into actual physical advertising. Uh, it, it's obviously it's hurting. And uh, so, but it's good to see, like, I think they're clamping down on this fake news and all this sort of stuff. I don't know how they're going to potentially do that. Uh, Maybe they're just going to, I don't know, how would they do it? How are they going to clamp down? Like, if someone publishes, sets themselves up as XYZ News Corporation, how how is Facebook going to say, well, that's that's fair income or not fair income? So, um, anyway, they reckon they can, so that's what they're up to. But have you guys seen any of these signs around? I'll just put one up on the screen for those that you... Anyone seen those ones? No. Only, uh, only on Facebook. I've seen a few people posting, you know, or right. Facebook, you know, Facebook advertising, I suppose. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's it's, it's, it's amazing. They've got to get their confidence back in the consumer. You know, they've got to do whatever they can because they, 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 they did cop it. I mean, everybody kind of haggled them pretty bad about it, so... But at the end of the day, is is uh, are people going to leave Facebook? Like, probably not. Like, it's so it's well. I know the younger generation. I think that they they they're shying away from it, aren't they? They're even shying now away from the Instagram. They're going elsewhere, uh, like the yeah. the Snapchats and all this sort of stuff. Oh, they always have. But it's 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 like I said to you in, in a couple of shows ago. Once that tradition kicks in, and people start using it, it becomes you just can't, it's hard to beat it. I mean, if if somebody tried to open up a Facebook now, they'd have no chance. No, no. Well, apparently, like, there's these other things called, is it Minds.com and yeah. Steam it? Like, are they, are they trying to rival? Or are they, well, I bet you they'd like but to will, be like Yeah, it. well, they are, but will they ever take over YouTube? Or Facebook, you know, yeah. And um, you know, like, something that's already established. It's like I said to you in a show a couple of weeks ago, like saying, um, you know, is anybody really going to ever take over Spotify when they 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 caught it? They took the market. They took that space. Mm, well, I saw a, a an stat uh, through the week that in America, in the US, that the Apple Music is bigger than Spotify. So that was a, that would be a stat that make Apple happy. Whether or not that that's not a worldwide stat, and I think maybe Apple Music has got a bit to go worldwide. But at least you got to you know you got to start somewhere, yeah, haven't you? Yeah, but you've also got people who will say something to make something look that way and it may not even be true mm. like you say with fake news it might just be a way of you know Apple Spinning selling it. themselves by saying we're in front you know mm. just to so people believe it but that's the thing like I th- Apple is probably the predominant phone in the US I would imagine and you know and it's an American company it's a success story it's a great it's a it's, well, it's a great success story it's it's um and whatever but then they outsource all their production out to overseas you know they're not sort of uh, giving it back to the Back to the people, but I think they are. I think they are starting to, aren't they? Because they're repatriating all the money that is overseas that they've collected through all this double Irish tax sandwiches, or yep. whatever they call. But aren't they? Um, aren't they stopping a lot of that now? They've been in trouble for it, haven't they? They've got to try and bring back some of the work. Well, well, they're bringing back the. Well, they're repatriating the money like uh, billions of dollars because apparently, like before Trump got in, uh, it was uh, I think it was like thirty-five or forty percent, you know, that they would have to pay in tax if they were to bring money back into the U.S. But Trump said, "No, look, there's you've, you, everyone's got so much money outside the U.S. We want it to come back." So I think he said, "I uh, said we'll only charge you fifteen percent," mm. you know. So and now that's made it really attractive for these companies just to yeah to bring the money back and hopefully just reinvest it back into the the u.s economy well hopefully for them anyway uh but yeah so that's that's all good but you know how much of it is belief that something is better than something else you know and how much of it is it you know is accurate i mean the stats if you look at the stats 
you know, people can say that Apple's Apple might might be the most common phone in the US. I don't know. I've never been there. It's pretty common here in Australia too. But then worldwide, mm. it's not. Android is eighty percent of the market. Yeah, and I think you know once you go into China, yeah. Well, I don't think Apple's really. I don't know if it's kicking too many goals over there, and and not too much in India either. Because like, it doesn't matter where you buy an Apple, it's still expensive. You know what mm. I mean? Like, yeah, it's that's not because it's not say a thousand dollars in Australia, but. Yeah, it doesn't equate to the same amount. Uh, well, it equates to the same amount in India, which is just sometimes prohibitive for the Indians. And you know, I don't, it. I don't believe at this current, at this current time that they're kicking goals, Apple. Anyway, I think they're kind of a little bit behind the eight ball at the moment, to be honest. Well, look, I reckon that I reckon so. I think we've yeah gone through all that over the past few oh, months and whatever like when Eric's been on you know we've all, always discussed that the, yeah. it doesn't seem there's any vision there anymore you know like um, I don't know you know like I think when, when about the time when Steve Jobs uh, passed away you know there was rumours that he had the, the plans for an Apple, an actual Apple TV in the safe you know yet to be built and maybe even or maybe there was even a prototype going around but that never sort of eventuated like an actual TV um, but and then they brought out the you know the little TV hockey puck device, which four hundred bucks for every each one, and yeah, it gets, gets a bit too much. I've got a little segue to an Apple story if you like from there. Oh, go for it. What do you what do you reckon? Go for it. I Sounds just, good. It was just just popped up tonight before we started the show, and it was. I'll try and just. I won't read the whole thing because I'll just get briefly through it so we can get through everything. But um, there was a great uh, a great what is it great concentration and wailing in the tech world when Apple finished its June developer conference without revealing one sig- single bit of new hardware. Uh, the mm-hmm. entire Mac line is a dire, is in dire need of an upgrade and some products like the, the Mac Mini, the MacBook Air have gone so long without spec bumps that they are no longer worth buying. So talk about inv- um, innovation and you know getting ahead and that's why I think they're not kicking goals. Mm. Um, well, I think people are crying out for... Ex- Sorry, I think people are crying out for like the touchscreen Mac, you know, and all this yeah. sort of stuff. And and I that's guess that's right. I said that didn't I the other week? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's right. I think it says we're already expecting a a, a bumper. A, sorry, a bumper crop of new Apple devices this September, thanks to the rumored launch of three new iPhones. But a new report uh, from legendary Apple supplier chain insider Ming Ching Ku, whatever it is, international security hints virtually. Every obsolete Apple product is going to get some love. Previous Whoa. reports that we're going, we're going to see three new iPhones this fall: a six-inch OLED uh, premium model, a five-point-eight-inch OLED replacement for the current iPhone X, and a cheaper six-point-one-inch LCD iPhone for people without a thousand dollars or so to go and buy a new one. But they're not uh, new. They're not innovative. It's, they're just no. natural progressive. The natural life cycle and evolution of the iPhone. There's nothing, nothing that's going to smack you in the face. It's not when, like, when Steve Jobs sat, sat, stood up on the stage and said, "How would you like a phone, a GPS, and a MP3 player all in one? Here it is." And everyone went, "Wow, yeah. my gosh, is that even possible?" <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and they were gobsmacked and blown away, and everyone out went out and spent all their savings and got one. Yes, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yes, but uh, yes. Anyway, I think that Apple seems to be a bit stuck there in a in a way. But you've also got one, Jordan, about the Microsoft. They're, they're sort of releasing a product to hopefully rival the iPad. Yeah, I've got a Microsoft announces uh, Microsoft announces its cheapest and lightest Surface ever. I was looking at this this week because my kids are off to secondary school next year. Mm. Um, so I was doing a little bit of um, research on these, and they come with Windows 10 S. Right. So I'm a bit hesitant as to whether they're going to be good enough for school stuff. But well, anyway. that's yeah, that's interesting. What that you say that because I couldn't. I went looking through the articles. I, I did went. I went through about three articles to find out what type of Windows was on it, and I couldn't find. The, the, all everything had just alluded to Windows, and the only thing I could mm. find was that. Uh, when it came to playing or running Windows software, I'm just trying to find in this story here, uh, it said, all I could find was it's designed to run all average powered Windows apps. So is, yeah. so is that the, the is that the rub there, apps? You know, like Windows... Well, I think it is going to be that, but there apparently is a professional commercial version coming as well from what, I've, what I found on the internet. 
Right. It says, um, it says, watch out, Apple and Microsoft has just announced the cheapest and most affordable Surface product to date, the Surface Go. Here's everything you need to know about the new product, uh, which really seems uh, to be taking aim at the iPad. Weighing just over 520 grams of an 8.3 millimeter body, it's demand, uh, sorry, it's a damn compact 10 inch device, <laughs> part laptop. Um, if you go for the optional keyboard as part of it. So it's pretty much the Surface style hmm. with that, that keyboard. It's powered by 7th gen Intel uh, 4415Y, whatever that is. But aren't, uh, aren't we up to 8th gen now? Like, why would they throw a 7th? Yeah, yeah. well, they put a really small one in. So you've got the choices of 4 gig or 8 gig of RAM, 64 gigabyte, 128, 256 of storage. Uh, promises uh, up to nine hours of battery life. Also is fanless. Um, and custom built pixel sense display and is compatible with the Surface Pen with 4,096 4, levels of pressure sensitivity. Um, has a head jack, headset jack? It has a head jack, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's my only concern. Um, it's got a USB C. Uh, USB C, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just kind of browsing through it here. Um, so, so I've look, if, if anybody's interested out there, go and have a look on YouTube. There's plenty of talk about it. There's not many reviews yet because it only just got announced. Mm. I think it was Tuesday night, wasn't it? Um, it's available. They're looking at kind of 599 Australian. I think that's with the keyboard. So so you can pre-order it now if you're in Australia, yeah. New Zealand, and yeah. uh, if you're listening in 19 other countries like North America, Europe, you can pre-order it now. Apparently they're going to start arriving on August the 2nd, yeah. an LTE model later this year. Uh, and battery life, I don't know if you said that, but it's up to nine, nine hours. hours. Yeah, apparently. So, and it doesn't come with a pen or a mouse keyboard. Or a keyboard. You've got to buy those separately. Mm. Yeah. So, look, I guess with look, I put this picture back up here of the, the two together. And you can you could probably suggest that, you know, that with the small one, the Go, uh, because it's got a smaller screen, slightly smaller, that the keyboard's going to be smaller. So, whether or not that's going to impact people. You know, like uh, with with big hands or whatever. You know, keys are probably a bit more squished or smaller. But uh, it'd be interesting to see. The well, reviews. that was also my other question. You know, for the kids at school, is ten inch a bit small? Maybe eleven or twelve might have been better for them at school. Uh, I don't know what the demands are. Like I said, my kids are just starting secondary next year, so. But iPads are around ten, aren't they? I think they're around ten. Yeah, but they don't use iPads at school. They're not meant to. I didn't think. I thought they had to have laptops. No, but I'm just saying for screen size. Well, well, my yeah, kids, well, they're the same. Yeah, my kids went to well, go to primary school. They use lapt uh, pa tablets, whatever they whatever they've got, they can take in. So oh, right. yeah, they do. I don't know what they do on them, but you have to buy a couple of apps, and yeah, I think they're cross platform as well. But yeah, what do you think of those, Joe? These uh, surf, the, new, the new Surface Go. Any, any oh, thoughts? I reckon they're a great idea. It's it's a long time coming. You know, they should have put out something like this a long time ago. Yes. Yeah. Look, the only, or would you call it a drawback if it doesn't run Windows software, just runs certain apps from the App Store, which maybe it sounds like it's going to. Jeez, well, there is the there is there is the option. Apparently, I'm not sure how full on that option is. I remember when the Surface laptop came out with, with 10s on it. They gave everybody the option, I think, with like 50 or 100 bucks to upgrade to uh, Windows 10 Pro, but I don't know how that works with this model. I, I remember reading somewhere it was going to run a different type of operating system. Did I remember that? Is that right? Yeah. yeah. The S. Yeah, if it's the S, that means it'll only run the stuff out of the store. Uh, so it goes, this, yeah, I'm just trying to look. I'm just trying to look here now uh, to see if I can find out exactly what it's going to run. Then he wind, rethinks the Windows tablets. So it doesn't PC world. Let's have a look in PC world. See if we've There's got not it. much information around because it's so new. Yeah. So yeah, I know there was one around that only ran certain apps out of the store, and it wouldn't run just normal. You couldn't just you know buy a CD and. Well, that was uh, the RT version originally would only run yes. apps out of the store, and then they kind of got rid of that. And there's a few people stuck with, I think, versions of Windows 8 and stuff that can't even get Windows 10. But then there was Windows S that came out with so, the Windows laptop that came out about a year or so ago. Yeah. And, so, so you think it's, it is Windows S, is that right? Or let me just yeah, Google yeah, search. Yeah, it is. I did, I did find information on the internet about that. Yeah. Oh, let's have a look. I actually thought it was something else. I, 
they were running a, a special. Oh no, I'm thinking of something. I'm thinking of maybe Google. Google's running something another different type of OS. No, don't worry about that. Yeah, so it says yeah, blah blah blah. Choice and flexibility. So enjoy all the great multi Windows multitasking yes, features like go. snapping Windows task and virtual desktops. You'll also get the full suite of built-in apps and all the newest Windows innovations. 3D Paint, Windows Inc, Windows Hello for the fast password-free sign-on. Uh, it just said that there, S mode. Yeah. As but, the title of that paragraph you were just reading, S mode. Yeah, but it's still that's got, what it, it's Windows in S mode. That's what Windows S is. Yeah, startups are quick and start. And S mode is built to keep them away with Microsoft, but it's, it doesn't. Like, it's not clear, is it? It doesn't say in Windows S mode uh, you cannot run uh, stuff you download off the internet. No, it does. If you look up Windows S, that's the standard default browser Edge. There you go, George. Yeah, and the default browser is Edge. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Unreal. All right. Cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> <laughs> that's sort the of. Uh, that's the Windows, the Surface Go. I don't know. Would but I they buy reckon one? It's as fast. That, didn't they say it's as fast as the Surface Three? I don't know. I, I don't know. know. The comparison is to a Surface Three and that. But would you buy one? That's what it comes I, down to. I reckon I'd come pretty close if it can do the Windows Thirty Two apps, which I think S can do. The, the, some of the Thirty Two, I can't. I'm not. I'm not one hundred percent sure. Mm. I did read something about it. It's not completely restricted, but it is pretty well restricted. <laughs> but for good, you know, basic iPad replacement use, yeah, for sure. What about you, uh, Joe? Would you buy one? Yeah, I would. I'd actually buy one. Hmm. Yeah, I'd. I'd want to see more about this Windows. I'd like to. If I'm going to spend six hundred dollars like that, you'd have to. I'd have to make sure I could hook into my network, do do some Windows things. I think uh, I just don't want it to be a you know a <laughs> half disabled. But that might be just me. I did have an iPhone for quite some time, so I was used to getting uh, ret- retarded operational functionality. Yeah, well, I think I'm over it. I think um, it's a bit like the the smartwatch. You know, I get so I get so frustrated with smartwatches because everybody's trying to cram in as much as they possibly can in the smartwatches. When all I ever wanted was just a, a smartwatch that could give me notifications mm. and and show me text messages and you know and the time. I didn't don't need games, don't need all the extra stuff. Just notifications and the time. And mm. it's the same with iPads and stuff. I think people with Windows with a Windows tablet, I think they expect more than they need. If you really want to do Windowsy things, wouldn't you be better off to get on your, you know, your big ballsy computer and go and do it properly? Well, you know, do yeah. good video editing and, you know, run a podcast show or something. You're not going to do it from one of and these look, iPads. Well, to be totally honest, look, I've got a, a Lenovo uh, laptop that, you know, you can bend, the, bend it back around over itself so it becomes like a tablet. A bit heavy to be carrying it around like a tablet all day. But... Look, I don't use it like that. I'm always using it as a laptop. <laughs> like, it's just easy. I like keyboards. I like the keyboard. Mm. Like, I just, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I just, I, and I like desktop computers. Like that, you can do because you, you got so much real estate on your screens. You know, it's you're not just confined mm. to such a little space where you got to keep zooming in and out. And mm. and yeah, like I like. I'm I like saying I'm not going to sit on there and you know do some photoshopping or something on a no. on a ten on a ten inch. You know, if no. I bought one of those ten inch. Windows Go tablets. It would be for basic, you know, mm. logging into a server and checking a few things. That's or, right. Just on you know, the run. Odd emails or yeah. Um, you know, I'm not going to do much remote desktoping or anything with that. If I'm going to do it, I'll do it on on my big machine. Mm. Now, uh, what else have you got, Joe? You had a couple of things you wanted to talk about this week. Yeah, there's something interesting happening um, with uh, YouTube. Um... That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> no, apparently um, YouTube is going to give um, creators uh, the chance to be able to flag people who steal their video. Right. right. So the idea is that if you are got over a hundred thousand subscri- subscribers, um, you'll then be able to get a um, a little tab in your um, uh, what's it called? The studio, the YouTube studio, the creator studio. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you get a little tab in there that comes up, and you can actually um, start monitoring anyone that copies your videos and puts them uh, on their own page and their own uh, YouTube. Right. So what I thought YouTube had algorithms to try and detect all that sort of stuff, anyway. But maybe it's they not. do. Um, and the the problem is that. 
um, up until about uh, the last quarter of 2017, Google had uh, removed about 8.3 million devices. Um, uh, or videos. Uh, different types of um, videos and stuff that had uh, violations. Well, just, be just before the show, just as something to add on to that, uh, I was reading an article about YouTube again, where there was a, cre uh, a songwriter, I sat down, he created a, a, an instrumental song, and you know he must have uploaded it somewhere or whatever. And then one day he was sitting down and uh, he he saw it again on another. He saw his own song on another video. So someone had sort of used his his creation and put words to it and uploaded uh, the video of his, his music, but someone else's words. And he got flagged for a copyright violation. And then he apparently he couldn't do anything about it. He he tried to do something about it, and in the end he just says, "Listen, mate." He spoke to the guy who uh, who uploaded the infringing one, his his work, and the bloke said, oh, "I didn't know it was yours. I I didn't copy it or anything. I downloaded a couple of things here and there, put it all together. That's, I didn't know." And in, yeah, in the end, the guy that wrote the original uh, guitar instrumental song, he just said, "Oh, forget about it. He's not going to make enough money out of it anyway." So he had to he had to give it away. But that was all YouTube YouTube algorithm generated. And so I was working against the content creator in this case. That's but, right. Uh, oh, but this thing, this thing here is something new, and it's um, not. Uh, it's actually the user can control it. It's a mm. um, they call, they give you a tool called the copyright match tool. Right. Right. And it flags instances of videos that um, that contents that are created by by your your uh, feeds and your videos. If anyone actually downloads them and read uploads them again. This thing actually has a, a thing that flags them. Um, That'd be a full time job it, for what someone. What it does is that you can either do one of two things. You can either um, get in contact with the person and tell him not to, you know, not to do that, and tell him to take it off, um, uh, or you can just completely ignore it and keep it as an as an archive. You know, if, you can save it in one of the folders and you keep it as an archive. Right. Yeah, you just got to remember though that. Um, YouTube reminds their creators that just because they find, just because you find a match, it doesn't, doesn't necessarily automatically mean that you've um, got someone who's infringed copyright. Yeah, you just got to remember there is a, a fair use policy and a fair dealing policy, mm. and um, for stuff that's similar to um, to copyright. So that's something you need to be mindful. Of. But the, the overall message here is that if you're a, a big time, you know, you got over a hundred thousand subscribers. And you want to protect your stuff? There is a way now that you can do it. Mm. But I guess if you've got a hundred thousand uh, subscribers or whatever, like you must have some sort of big content, uh, you know, content generating machine. Uh, it's, it'd be a, uh, I don't know. Geez, you could you imagine all the violations. Say, I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know. Netflix would get, <laughs> for example. I'll, I'll you know? give you a, give you an ex give you an example. Let's say someone takes this podcast that that um. That we're doing this live live stream podcasts, and um, they decides that they're going to download it, change a few things, edit it, and rebroadcast it up again. Well, you know that's that's in, that's an infringement of the copyright. Yeah. Uh, yes. I th yes. I think it is. I think it is because I think. It yeah, because I think I upload. So using this as an example, yeah, I upload it with the YouTube copyright notices. Yeah, because you can choose the Creative Commons. And like I don't mind. The only reason I don't use Juice Creative Commons is because it's just another button I've got to push <laughs> when I upload it. Yeah. But uh, um, yeah, I know. Yeah. So yeah, like how many times do you get flagged for copyright, possible copyright infringements? Like you know, every time I play a video uh, on the podcast, like for the people on the YouTube, there yeah, I'll get flagged for it. And uh, and you, know, you go and look and you go, really? I play thirty seconds say, of a Microsoft uh, Surface ad. You know, an ad, and they and they want to ping you for that, and I just go, yeah, yeah. I'll leave it a couple of weeks, and I just yeah. take the whole episode down. <laughs> I get stuffed. Yeah, <laughs> look, look, I, I get why why someone would want to complain about it. You know, someone's got a hundred thousand, you know, subscribers. They might want to monetize that sub, that that the content that they're using, mm. and you know, Google pays and the ads that they generate from it. So. Um, oh yeah, look, I understand it. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you've got yeah, something I that, you, get that, yeah, yeah, look, I, I get that too. Yeah, you, you, if you if you're a content creator and you make you're out to make money from it, yeah, you don't want people stealing it. That's not right. That is not right. Yeah. Uh, all right. Where where am I going? How's this one? Uh, PayPal 
told cu- a customer her death breached its rules. Now, yo, what the hell is that about? So any, what happened was a lady, she was only relatively young, unfortunately, about 37, uh, she died from breast cancer or and associated cancers. Uh, so her widower received a letter from PayPal, uh, which said it was addressed to her, to the, to the uh, deceased wife, sent to their home in England, uh, it was headlined important. You should read this notice carefully. It said that Mrs. Durdle, that was her name, owed the company about three thousand two hundred pounds, and went on to say, "You are in breach of condition fifteen point four C of your agreement with PayPal Credit, as we have received notice that you are deceased. This breach is not capable of remedy." Well, I don't think it would be. I think only God could remedy that situation. Uh, Mr. Durdle said a member of PayPal staff has told him that there were three possible explanations. A bug, a bad letter template, or human error. We'd hope it's not human error. Jeez. He added that it had been assured that whatever the cause, it would be addressed through PayPal. It would be addressed, although PayPal had told him it would not be able to share the information because it was an internal matter. And this is what sort of gets you annoyed, isn't it? Like, you've got a a pretty legitimate complaint going on, and... uh, you just want to be told what the outcome was, I think. I'd like to know. I'd like to know that they've taken it seriously. They've they've done X, Y, Z. You might not even understand what they've done, but, you know, they've told you they've done X, Y, Z and you're on your way. And, um, yeah, that's uh, that's crazy. I don't know if I, I don't know if I had a picture. There was, a, I think he had a picture of the letter. I'm not sure. And there's the letter there. See if I can get that any bigger for you on the, if you're watching YouTube. But, yeah, it's uh, crazy stuff. But yeah, but I, th- I guess like you know, it's just a one of these things where the company is that big that they just don't know what's going on half the time. But how would that even make its way into a letter? You know, like it's just... why would you send something to someone you know is dead anyway? Well, it must be just a a, a, a letter that has just been created by the computer and it's just pulled fields here and there. Uh, but you would think that once a record, once someone has died, that the, the say the and PayPal had been notified of it, which they had been uh, by the husband, that you think that they would, that there'd be some sort of thing there. Say, so, okay, if 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 the if it's flagged as deceased, how about no more letters are sent to this person? That's it. End of story. That's just nothing's going to happen anymore. It's finished. The end of the, you know, the story's finished. Well, they're not going to get their money, are they? I think that, no. kind of get, that kind of gets closed up with the, the estate when, when... Yeah, well, I, I guess, like, if it was a, a maybe a larger amount of money and maybe be, if the letter wasn't sent, but in this instance, yeah, PayPal said they've written it off. But I can understand, you know, if it was owed, whatever, 10000 you know, whatever, like, what, £3,000, that's about, say, $6,000. I don't know, would you, you, you could go after that. I, don't, I wouldn't have a problem in, say, people going after it, but there's a problem when they're sending letters saying that, uh, you know, you're deceased, so you're in breach of conditions and everything. It's a bit insensitive, that's all. So the only way to get your debt wiped is to die? You could try it. That's, that's why <laughs> that's why people run themselves into walls and off bridges trying to get rid of debts, I think. Uh, sometimes. <laughs> all right. Well, I, I, I kind of read an article, really strange article. I couldn't believe it. It's probably not very tech-related, but there was... Some shop, I don't know if it's true, opened up a a cannibalism shop or something. Opened up a cannibal cannibalistic shop somewhere in Queensland or something like that. And it's like you could you could sell your body and for like a certain amount of dollars, and then after you die, you take the money and you give it to your family. But your body gets right chopped up. Sold it gets chopped up and sold as a meal to these people. What? Yeah, couldn't think of anything geez. worse, but apparently they pay big dollars for a meal. <laughs> so geez, you have to get there they, pretty Apparently fast. they do it in, in other countries. Um, I don't know how true it was. I remember reading it years ago, or a year or so ago, about how one I opened up in Queensland or something. Someone what? got the rights to open it. They, they weren't allowed to, but they got approved somehow. They got approved? <laughs> legal legal <laughs> sources or something, unless it was another one of those fake Facebook news. Might have been on the fake side. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a pretty good story, though, I thought. so. Yeah. I, but I, if you I, want to make some money to leave for your family, maybe you could look into that. Oh, jeez. Oh, Pay out your debts when you go. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I've never heard of something like that before. Imagine look that. Look it up. Apparently, it's uh, apparently from what they, that ad said is that there are places in the world that do do it. I'm going to Google it. cannibalize after death. Hang on, after it's death. apparently it's Queensland. It's a, legal, it's a legal thing if if the person you know agrees to it. Obviously, it's probably on the black market anyway. But, um, <laughs> yeah. but apparently, it can be legal if there's someone's got it through on a legal basis. Something I don't know. Maybe it's wrong. I can't see you. nothing. Yeah, it's a, it's a side a side venture for the funeral directors. <laughs> <laughs> Out, chops up the body, and in comes just a couple of bricks into the coffin. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's all right. I can't see that there were things in Queensland. <laughs> I can't see that. It was a while ago. I couldn't tell you where the article was. I don't even remember whether it was Facebook. I thought it was in the news. I thought it wasn't Facebook. But if you can, because I, I was shocked. I was like, what? Well, here we, we go. Here we go. If you cannibalise a person with an illness, will you get sick? Most human illnesses aren't going to pose a problem for a potential Hannibal Lecter. Cancer isn't <laughs> contagious, and one yeah. person's cancer cells generally aren't able to live inside anyone else's else because a healthy immune system will wipe them out. There have, however, been a few instances where people caught cancer from an organ transplant because they had to take drugs to suppress the immune system. Uh, yeah, so blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I would like you know, if you if you're worried about getting a disease from eating someone, if then you just don't Google, eat them. If you just Google pay pay for uh, pay for a human meal and see what it comes up as. Oh god, that, that's going a bit extreme now, don't you? Think? Then, then you'll find out what I'm about these shops that that they're they're legal. Apparently, it's it's in their will. There's nothing I can't find. <laughs> I can't find anything. It was in Queensland. Oh, stop. stop it. Yeah, we're not that bad up here. You'll turn all the tourists away. You just want more tourists in uh, Victoria. Yeah, yeah, bring them down here. We need it. Yeah, I know. You're just trying to steal our our, our livelihoods. Uh, all right. Uh, did, did you have any more, Joe? Um, yeah, I have. Um, this one's a bit uh, a bit weird as well. I, I, I got <laughs> Good. this one here. <laughs> I've got this oh, one no. here, where the dark web. If anyone knows what the dark web is, um, there, there's a, the markets there are selling access to some exploited uh, networks, um, in particular, uh, in this case, um, airports. Um, oh, right. The, the, yeah. The crew at McAfee Advanced uh, Threat Research um, have been looking around on the dark web in, uh, in the marketplaces in the dark web. And what they've found there is uh, a number of shops that are offering stolen access to various companies and various groups and organizations and their systems. Um, in one particular place, um, they found that the airport security SIP systems, um, as well as its building automation systems and surveillance systems, um, were also compromised. Oh. And the thing is, though, all that access you can buy on the dark web for only 10 bucks. That's crazy, isn't it? Right. So for 10 bucks, if you know where to find it on the dark web, um, you'll find some places that will give you or they'll show you uh, the links or access or whatever it is to, um, to places that have been compromised. Now, mm. um, in, in the case of the airport, um, they're saying that they found a, a compromise in the remote desktop protocol, um, which they normally give their employees to remote access to certain computers on the network at the at the airport. Right. So they've actually been penetrated that system, and um, they're selling people access. Yeah, that's uh, crazy. Like, but I guess like, okay, so you might buy it for ten bucks, but geez, you'd still really want to know what you're doing, wouldn't you? Like, I mean, oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, you know, someone that goes in there would have to know what why they're going in there for starters that they have to be able to know how to how to hide and things like that mm. inside the network yeah you, you just wouldn't uh, grab the ten dollar uh, or you can eat little uh security breach meal and then just go okay let's run it and see what happens and while you're sitting at home unprotected on the internet <laughs> like you just wouldn't do it you know, the cops would be around before you could finish your chips 
So yeah, yeah McAfee has asked, have also um, has said that they've come across a lot of government systems as well, right? Uh, which are linked into the US. Yeah, right. Um, as well as uh, a whole heap of um, healthcare institutions as well. Mm. So apparently they've they've come across all these different links and all these different access methods and and so forth. Um, and you can get it all down on the dark web if if you know how to get into the dark web because obviously you just can't use Google to get to find the dark web. It's you need to go a bit deeper than that. Yeah, look, I think uh, look, I mentioned this one before, but if you want to have a hear a good story about the dark web uh, or the Silk Road, which lives, oh, I think it lived. Don't know if it still lives, but it did live on the dark web. Uh, there's a podcast case file. And there's a three-part series called Silk Road. And, geez, it's, it's one of the best little listens that I've ever listened to. I, I just got me, in, you know, it's just so enthralling and you just just got to keep listening. And it's, it's really, really good. And it's three versions, so they've all been published. So, you, you know, you can you can binge listen <laughs> all three episodes if you want to. But, yeah, it's really good. It's Case File is the podcast. And I think oh, it's... Oh, cool. You might want to put that in the notes because I, I don't want to have a look at that myself, actually. Yeah, and it goes, it goes from how... The Silk Road was from inception, created, maintained, grew, and then finally, yeah, busted. And it was, and some of the things along the line that you know it led to its downfall was quite, uh, just quite luck. You know, not lucky for the person who created, it, but just luck for the government, luck for the FBI. Uh, it's really good, Joe. Yeah, have a listen to it. Uh, yeah, case yeah, well, yeah. If you can send it along to me, that'd be great. Yeah, or just search it up in iTunes. Do you use iTunes? No, I don't use iTunes. What do you use? Do you use a podcast? Do you think? I do use a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Just well, podcast just. App, yeah. I don't know if I can send it to you because it's a podcast. But just search for case file. I just leave it in the show notes or something like that somewhere I can just look up the name. Yeah. All right. No worries. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so um, McAfee have said that um, for security reasons, they're not uh, naming them the airport or any of the other places that they've actually found that were compromised. No. But they, but they actually have told them, they've told each and every one of them, um, that there is a, uh, a breach in their network. And um, so we don't know whether they've fixed them or not yet, but... Um, yeah, well, yeah, hopefully so, they have. Yeah, just be aware of that. that that's, um, that's really crazy. I mean, all the stuff you can find down on the dark web. Yeah, and look, uh, you, know, you might think that, yeah, this is really dangerous or whatever you don't know even that you know these little things could just be put there by the feds you know you know they go oh yeah well here's a breach let's see who buys it and then we'll, we'll just check them out but yeah because like if you're if you're able to access the dark web you know every, the law enforcement's able to too it's a very murky place apparently i've never i've never gone into it it's probably monday if i get time i might have a go but <laughs> um just have a look and see I, what's I, I went to a long time ago when i say a long time ago maybe five six years ago yeah and yep. and it was at the time when just the FBI had just cracked it, right? right? So I went I went in around about that time, and when that when that came up on the news, saying that the FBI had cracked it, and the whole dark web was um, would have been about the time when the Silk Road was uh, was was compromised as well. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So ever since then, I, I I just never been back in there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a it's a nasty place, <laughs> a murky, muddy place. Uh, Jordan, you got any more? Do you want to talk about? Hello? No? I think you're muted. No, I'm here. I'm oh. here. Sorry. Yeah. I'm, trying, I'm trying to get my mouse to click in two places at once. <laughs> um, yeah, it's this one. This is, a, this is an interesting one. Put a bit of a spin on. We've been talking about this fortnight over the last few episodes because my boy's been wanting to play it and I keep asking people out there if it's brutal or not. Oh, yes. Everybody's like, oh, it's not brutal. And, I've, you know, I've actually... I've, I've downloaded it. It's free. I didn't even realise on the internet. Um, you can just get it from their website and the kids can play it straight up. Mm. Um, but a primary school in the UK has banned its students from doing the popular floss dance, which is from that game, right. due to its association with a violent and addictive video game. <laughs> right. The, the administration <laughs> at, uh, what is it, uh, Lathcrom... I don't know what it is, Laf- Lafricom in the UK school. has in, De- in Devon recently sent a notice home to parents explaining that the dance moves from the video game Fortnite had been used in a gang-like way 
in the schoolyard to surround and intimidate children. And we want our school to be one in which human beings treat each other with kindness and appreciation, wrote the teacher. Uh, yeah, I can't imagine why. Fortnite is about mass killing of human beings and is being awarded by the dance. Sorry, Fortnite is about mass killing of other human beings and is being awarded by a dance of celebration if you are successful. She continued so, adding okay. to her thing. Okay. So so what what about the mass mass killing of space invaders? She doesn't care about that. She probably would have played that when she was growing up. You know, she doesn't Well that's right, but is there a dance that goes with space invaders that the kids can use to dance around the other kids and stir them up? I used to do a little jig when I finished a screen. <laughs> I'm sure you did. <laughs> oh, look, it's just retarded. I don't know it why. It just says that Fortnite is extremely addictive and playing violent games is associated with real-life aggressive behaviour and mental illness issues. Look. Fortnite is is uh, safe, a safeguarding concern and will be logged as no. such. Look I, look, I had concerns before I even saw it. I, I saw it. I look. I watch videos and stuff before I let the kids play it. And look, it's just a. It's a. It's a. What is it? Like a. They call it a first-person shooter. It's not. Well, yes, you are shooting uh, graphics that resemble people. Yes, but you're not. It's not like say they're actually like pretty close photographic matches of a person. And you know, you're blowing their head off, and the blood oozes out, and and the guts spews back out through their neck because their head's been chopped off. There's nothing like that. It's just you just you shoot someone, they explode, and they go. That's it. The pixels. I think it's disperse. the addiction of it that's is what I was saying on Current Affair or what it was, mm. whatever it was a few weeks back. It was more about the addiction of it, wasn't yeah. it? It wasn't so much about the violence in in the game. Yeah, but I suppose back to doing this, doing a dance. Like, who cares? I, I, I look. I just don't think that's a big problem. Look, maybe no. people are addicted to the game. Look, I know my kids; they just want to play it all day long. But you just kick them off. You can tell them to get outside. That's I tell right. them to go and play. Do you know how many kids probably actually do those dances at school and stuff that have never even played the game? Yeah, I've I've done the dance. I've tried to do it. You know, I, I do the the, the floss just a dance. trendy dance move because of that <laughs> yes. game. It's not. Yeah, it's it's not. The yeah. dance isn't nothing wrong. We went roller skating this afternoon. They're all doing it around the roller skating rink while they were skating. Yeah, I, th- I thought I had the dance down pat, but apparently I don't. You know. So- <laughs> So, so look, I'll see if I can find it on the. See if I can find a uh, an example here, so I can show you the floss. The floss. Yeah, hang on. I don't know if we get. Uh, oh. <laughs> I don't think they were dancing like that back in the sixties and seventies, anyway. Yeah, or something probably similar. Look, here's a here's a video. Let's see if we can see this girl doing a floss. I think it's a girl. Let's see if we can do see this person doing a floss dance when it loads on my internet loading 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 who where is this from the new here we go there we go see what's wrong with that dance <laughs> they're dancing because they just killed somebody <laughs> it's a da- oh, I've done that dance at the footy what are they talking yeah. about <laughs> like I said half those kids wouldn't have even played the game they're just doing it because everybody does it yeah well, that's right it's like doing the gangman style isn't it really yeah you know everybody was just doing it yeah, I know. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh, I don't know, bloody people. They go on out of control. But apparently, the these kids were using it to intimidate other children at school. What? Like, oh no, not intimidation at school. No, no. That's the last Dancing last place. the other kids doing the floss and oh, intimidating them. God's truth. Look, when I was at school, I had staples stapled into my leg. That was the rage back then. <laughs> my legs were all right. Or having your head flushed. Yeah, I didn't quite anyway. get that far. I think no, I had, didn't get that. Before. No, I didn't. I saw someone get their head flushed. Uh, I had uh, I had jelly crystals put in my hair, and then my head shoved under a tap. That was interesting. Um, but yeah, that's about the worst. I've jelly got. crystals. Yeah, well, then the jelly sort of all went je- hard like, in your hair. Oh well, yeah, all soppy and mucky and stuff in my hair. I never had anything like that happen to me. And then then I had to wait the whole day, to, you know, before I could go home, and so I had pretty much just jelly in my hair. <laughs> It didn't happen again. I got revenge. Don't you worry. <laughs> anyway. Don't worry about that. You no, you, yeah, I got revenge. Uh, Twitter shuts down millions of fake accounts. Uh, the suspensions and shutdowns were part of a 
concerted effort by Twitter to clear up the platform. Many of the accounts are thought to be used by trolls, oh, heavens forbid, or remotely controlled bots, oh, really? Uh, that abuse the service. Twitter is just the real... I don't know why, why people um, obsess over Twitter. It's just the big cesspool, isn't it? It's a, it's a really... It's a social cesspool at times. It's just... Uh, yeah, look, there's a little Twitter troll. But, uh, yeah, but anyway, it's good that they can tidy it up a bit. I don't know how you can keep something like that tidy. Accounts are just going to keep getting created. Uh, many of the accounts... Uh, yeah, Juan Guzman a researcher at UCL who has exposed hundreds of thousands of bots on social media said Twitter had neglected tackling automatic tweet generators for years. Until recently, Twitter did not think bots were a problem on its platform and did not lead a strong bot detection effort. But that's all changed. So, whoopee-doo. Uh, how you going, Joe? Any more from you down there? Or comments on Twitter trolls? No, I haven't got any more stories, no. All right, uh, Jordan? Oh, I could probably squeeze one out from somewhere. I, um, squeeze one what out. I have here, I had uh, Samsung's next wearable is apparently called the Galaxy Watch, or I think this might be, a, I don't think it's official, but it seems that it seems like Samsung's next wearable will be named the Samsung Galaxy Watch. Samsung recently registered a logo for the Samsung Galaxy Watch with the Korean Intellectual Property Organization as spotted by Galaxy Club. I don't know why we have to have so many names in there of all these different businesses that did all these things. Um, you can check out the filing and the logo b- below. But, yeah, it seems like, where are we? The filing, the filing seems to confirm that Galaxy Watch, the, the, the Galaxy Watch name. Previous rumours referred to Samsung's up-and-coming wearable as the Samsung Gear S4, following the naming structure of the Gear S3 and Gear S2 before that. But we also heard rumours that the device may be called a Galaxy Watch and not a Gear S4. That was confusing. Hmm. <laughs> Perhaps this means Samsung may release two wearables, the Galaxy Watch and the Gear S4, or Samsung is rebranding its Gear S watch uh, with a Galaxy name. Yeah. Uh, but that's it. For more information regarding the Samsung Gear S4, you can read uh, CNET's rumour roundup. Look, I don't, uh, I don't even miss a watch. I remember walking out of employed employment of quite some years ago took the watch off and never put it back on so i've got a fish smart watch no no just a watch i just you don't need them now you know you got a phone you got time on the phone but know. that's what i was saying before about having um a watch that just gives me notifications and the time i don't need you know games and videos and backgrounds and you know and, and i don't even need that, that you can you know, I yeah. think that, that they took the watch too far and everybody wants too much and, you know. Yeah. But mine, I've got the Galaxy uh, the Galaxy Gear S um, 3, mm-hmm. I think it is. Yeah. With the, uh, which is the classic version. I don't know if you can see that there. Oh, nice, yeah. Um, and I love it, but I don't use all its features. Yeah, yeah. Kind right. of a waste. And There's you always have a little dial on it that you can actually dial the... Yeah, oh, it's got the... Uh, the little yeah. dial on it. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, so it's um, you know, and it's great. You can get them cheap enough now. You can go to, go into Telstra or whatever, and I think I pay about twelve bucks a month to have it on my phone plan. Yeah, extra right. Extra on my phone. You mm. can get them cheap enough. Yeah. Um, How much do you buy them outright for? Do you know? I think they're about five fifty or six hundred to buy them. Yeah, I think, right. That looked the... that, look quite nice. The face you got on there, the old, the old, just the analog face. That looked nice. I like. Oh that. yeah, with the um, oh, I fucking bring it up now. I just, it's an old, I don't know what the screen is. I got it from somewhere. Yeah, that's cool. You can, um, I think you can kind of tap the, yeah. change the color. Waterproof? The screen from their thing. I don't think that, I think the next one up was. Right. This is just a $20 eBay, eBay job, the band. It comes with a black leather one. Right. Yeah, um, that looks but, pretty flash. Yeah, and you can just, you just turn the dial to get all the, you know, the different things. Yeah, nice. You can, um. I think you can go into that menu as well and get all the different yeah. as well. So what's battery life like on it, Jordan? Fine. I get a, I get easy two days out of it. That's all right. But you're not using it probably full on. You're not probably well, I'm not Dick Tracy. I'm not sitting there making phone calls on it. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's my point, is I don't want to watch I don't want to be Dick Tracy. Yeah. I just want to watch that gives me a notification says I that email that important <laughs> email you're waiting for has come in. Get on your computer and read it. I don't even need to read it on the 
on the phone. I just want to see that it's there. Mm. Or, a, or a text message to say, your mum just texted you yeah. and you're late for dinner. Hurry up. Reply back on your phone. <laughs> Not yeah. reply back on your little mini keyboard on your watch. Don't need to. No. All right. Uh, and again, you could actually ask the Google to do it for you. Hey, Google. Oh, I'm not going to sit there and go, hey, Google, into my watch. <laughs> That's as bad as talking on the phone. I, I think we, at some point, I think we lost track of what our watches should do. I think there could be so many cool watches out there if people just kept it simple. Really, you should just get the Pebble or the whatever it is, you know, the Pebble that lasts days and days and days on battery because it does nothing else. I think the, 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 the watch, say... Maybe core functionality of a watch for me would be okay time and maybe yep. like health stats like your heart rate your whatever like the fitness stats the basics mm. yeah uh, I can't see what else I'd be wanting to do maybe if it was waterproof yes then it, then I'd say yes okay let it make calls and everything if it's waterproof then you can go out swimming with it you could be Dick Tracy out on the out the back of a few sets down at Kira you're not going to talk to people while you're out swimming on the phone are you I would. <laughs> Hang on, what are you up to, Glenn? Oh, I'm just yeah. swimming. Yeah, just because I could, I would. I'd go. I'd don't, ring. don't, don't text and swim. I'd you ring might run over someone. Swim over someone. I'd ring you, Jordan. Okay, yeah. Jordan, guess where I am? Be like, oh, I'm just <laughs> under the water. <laughs> yes. I'll say hello to my fish. Uh, you know, yeah. they say that the amount of times people pull a phone out of their pocket to view the time is incredible. Yeah, I, I do yeah. that. Yeah. Yep, so if if you didn't have to pull your phone out of pocket all the time just to view the time, yeah. you'd probably save battery life on your phone. <laughs> another good another good reason why I would have with Jordan is while you're driving along and you get a message coming up on your phone, you can't actually you know, pick up your phone, obviously, because of the laws. So you just quickly glimpse over at your watch. Oh, yeah, that's so-and-so, that could wait. Or that's, oh, no, I've got to pull over and talk to that person and just ring, that, ring them up. That's mm. what I'm saying. Just notifications. You don't yeah. need to sit there and go, shit, I'm driving, I better reply back. I don't even want a hands-free kit on there so I can talk to people <laughs> while I'm driving. There's a hands-free kit in my car. I'd just like to have just a notification. It just says, hey, man, Joe Blow just texted you. Wants yeah. to see you later on today. Let him know. And you're like, cool. Well, when I finish driving, I'll get off on the side of the road and text him back. You know? Now, if I had a, a phone that rang people, I'd be ringing into the Hong Kong stock exchange and I'd throw $20 and buy some Xiaomi shares. So the world's fourth largest smartphone maker has raised $4.7 billion and but it's only just over half the target it hoped for uh, valuing the company at $54 billion. So Xiaomi, these, the phone that I have, so they're pretty they're pretty uh, they're pretty popular these days the, the Xiaomi. Yeah, I like them. They're, they're really getting some traction. Mm, as the first of many Chinese tech firms to list in Hong Kong in 2018, it did make a disappointing start, but, you know, such is life. Xiaomi's trading debut was the biggest technology share sale since Alibaba raised $25 billion. Outside its home market in China, Xiaomi is a major player in India where it rivals Samsung as the most popular handset maker. Now, do I have a picture of the Xiaomi? I've got some Xiaomi's. There's some Xiaomi's. Last year, uh, Xiaomi moved into the Spanish market and reports suggested it's also looking to get into the US to take on Apple. Smartphones make up 70% of Xiaomi's revenue, but it's also got a fast-growing, diverse focus on internet-connected home appliances and gadgets. I think we've mentioned them before. Uh, they've got va the Robo vacuum cleaners and the like. Uh, the shares in Xiaomi, the, f the firm often called China's Apple, fell from $17, 17 Hong Kong dollars to a low of 16 Hong Kong dollars in the first hour of trade, although the price recovered to $16 Hong Kong 80. So, yeah, pretty pretty stable. And uh, I've got another quick one here just to finish off with, is for those of you who have a Sonos speakers at home, the AirPlay 2 on Sonos means that now you can do heaps of Apple related stuff on your Sonos AirPlay from your phone to the Sonos how good is that it's not to all of them you, know, you have to have uh, specific models so just jump onto the show notes or go to Sonos to find out it is a free upgrade uh, so if you've got a compatible Sonos speaker that'll just get the free upgrade next time you uh, check for updates uh, Sonos customers can start using the AirPlay 2 which helps uh, shore up Sonos in a world of ever greater competition from Apple Google Amazon uh, Sonos has been a major pioneer in multi-room audio, but doesn't have its own intelligent assistant. Uh, look, the, the sound of these things is great. I'll get the Play 5, and look, I'll get another one this year. 
so I want two. And they're just great. The sound is so clear. It's just, oh, I've never heard anything like it. Even well, though, I like the uh, the video you did this week on Facebook Live I saw of you doing a video. It sounded good. You were talking. and Oh, that's right. on the Shami, yes. Showing showing everybody the view of the ocean and people surfing and yep. giving, us, giving us the tour. Sounded yeah. great. Yes. Now, oh, look, I, I know you, people, you won't be able to probably see it because it, it went to my... Um, personal Facebook page uh, look if you want if you want me to do a photo or videos uh, like that I'll tell me and I, I will I'll put them up on the Aussie Tech S Facebook page <laughs> for something different but yeah mm. look uh, look. the only issue that I had was uh, I started it off in landscape mode and the phone said oh I'll turn it up to turn it vertical so it's in you know phone mode uh, and so I did and then yeah that's the same thing that happened to me not long ago I recorded something in landscape mode but because it was on a phone it comes out on its side when you play it on the desktop so you've got to record it in the vertical the vertical mode otherwise otherwise you record it like that it comes out sideways on your desktop it's pretty weird I wonder how many phones actually does that I've never never noticed before but I have seen videos that don't sit right on the well, computer I wonder you if that's try and cool. do try and do a landscape Facebook live this week and then have a look at it on the desktop and see how it plays See if it's on its side or not. I oh, will. Yeah, because because uh, I got bagged for not doing it in landscape, because <laughs> that's one of my pet hates. You know, I hate stuff done in a vertical format, and uh, but I did start it off in in landscape. But it, yeah, uh, then I realised said turn the phone up or it'll come out on its side. So I turned the phone up because I didn't want it coming out on its side. Um, but anyway, that's, makes sense. That's how it works. But yeah, so uh, Sonos. Facebook AirPlay. All right, all right, cool. Well, well apparently, if you, that new Instagram TV, I'm not sure whether you're aware of it, that new Instagram TV now, they always take the um, the, photo, the video in uh, the vertical, like straight up and down mm. mode. Yeah, I think it's, I think, and I think this is how Facebook has gone as well, because I think, you know, the likes of Snapchat and everything, it's called like phone mode or something. And it's because all these videos, like when people look at Facebook, m- most of the time they they'd have the stats, but it, you'd have to go a vast majority of the time that people are on Facebook watching videos would be on a phone, and people on a phone hold it vertical to use it. Uh, not all the time they're gonna they can want to keep doing you know changing it around. So I don't know. Yeah, even when they take photos, they, it's just yeah vertical. You know, it's one click on the thumb, you know. Yeah, that's right. Yep. I like to do it horizontal, but, you know, if they're not going to come out right, I'll, I'll do it as they want. You know, I'll comply. I'll conform. That's, that's how I do. That's what I do. Uh, all right. Well, that's uh, that's it. That's the end of this We've week. we got a comment there yeah. on Facebook. Yeah. Um, uh, Corey Butch, Butchen, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, check out the Fossil Hybrid Watches. It's a mix of traditional and smart features, and the battery life lasts a year. A year? Wow. A year's battery life. It's worth looking at. Pretty good. The yeah, fossil right. hybrid. Yeah. I have to, have to Google that one. Mm. You got it on there on Google? You want to bring it up and put it on the screen? I, I shout. What is it called? Fossil hybrid. Fossil hybrid. Hi- let me get a thing out. Fossil hybrid. The fossil, the Lexus So he hybrid. says it's a, 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 it's a hot... Well, it's a fossil, but it's a hybrid. No, not a fossil hybrid. It's a fossil, but it is a hybrid. There we go. Well, they look pretty spiffy, don't they? So they're a mix of normal watch and smartwatch. Yeah, Sorry, right. I'm talking over the video. Well, they're only about $71. $71. Well, where's the smartwatch in them? Let's click into this one. Well, that one's $130. But what's the smartness of them? I don't know. Let's see if we can get a video. I can't show you the top of that video. But anyway, we get... It's might a hybrid get a... smartwatch. There you go. You've got one there. I can only see half it, but sorry about that. But that's just the way it is. Oh, can I bring it? I don't think I can bring it in. No. Okay, but anyway, that's... Yeah, have a look if you're interested. It's uh, Let's see if I can get the webpage for you. It's fossil.com. F-O-S-S-I-L.com. And, uh, yeah, fossil smartwatches. So have a look at those. I might have a look at those in a second after the show. All right, cool. Lovely. All Someone right. else has just commented saying that there's a uh, a retro. What? A retro, I don't know what that is. Retro watch. <laughs> look at it. 
it's, there's a link in the uh, in the Facebook link. I don't know if you can see it there. It's got a full keyboard on it. <laughs> kind of like that. I don't know if I'd like one of those. All right. Um, Let me have a bring, quick look. You'll I'll, have to bring that up now. Can you click the link? Yeah, hang on. I'll, that's, I'll, that's I'll try to find it. Laugh. <laughs> hang on. That's funny. I like that one. Vino, yeah, Pete Vino said that one. Hang on. I can't, I, I'm still logging in. So you told me not to log into Facebook while I was doing the show. So see, well, I maybe have, I can. I obey. I can. <laughs> Hang on, let me have a look. Uh, uh, is it the? Oh yeah, the Wikipedia link. Here we go. Yeah. Okay, we copy the link, place the link in here. Place, paste it in. All right, here we go. What is this called? <laughs> <laughs> You're you kidding. Like You'll need a pin or something to use the use the keyboard on that. Oh, you are kidding. How I, oh, that's a, it's a Hewlett Packard HP01, a calculator watch. It was designed and manufactured by Hewlett Packard. The HP01 used seven light emitting diodes in a seven digit plus decimal point arrangement for its digital display introduced in 1977. So you get an idea of how poxy this must be. <laughs> Prices were 450 and 550 for the low end. Woo! And, and a, and a, Oh, in steel, <laughs> steel. None of this rose gold, the hogwash. Just steel. <laughs> oh, can I have the steel one, please? Oh yes, HP sold a battery replacement kit that allowed the customer to change the batteries themselves. That's handy. The watch used two batteries for the display and one for the processor. It also comes with a ballpoint pen with a stylus on the rear end. Most of the 28 buttons on the HP01 are recessed, so it's like it's got the. Uh, zero to one and a few little other characters in recessed buttons on the face of the watch oh my god you have to have a look at this it's uh yeah it's in wikipedia it's a hewlett packard hp hyphen zero one go and have a look at that rubbish you'll have to you'll have to put that in the show notes that's a classic literally yeah so what have we got the hp one is unique not only as the only hewlett packard watch but due to these unique features, data type for time, date and time interval, and the ability to perform mathematics on these data types, a stopwatch that allows a stopwatch time to be multiplied or divided by constant. Um, the HP01 is Hewlett Packard's first algebraic calculator. Prior to the HP01, all HP calculators used reversed pol- Polish notation. Some later calculators use a mixture of both. How good is that? All right, I will put that in the show notes for you. Go and have a look at that piece of rubbish. Good stuff. That's good to end the show on a bit of a laugh because that's the, what that watch is. <laughs> that's crap. <laughs> that's a perla. That Absolutely. Is, that is crap. Well done, Pete, for that. That just uh, good stuff. Us on a high note for the end of the show. Great. <laughs> yes. All right. Cool. Okay. That's it. So thanks. I don't know what happened to Joe. He looks like he's disappeared. Oh, Joe's gone. He did go. Oh, well. Well, Joe says his goodbyes. You can catch him at Joe... The, oh, what is his page? Joe the Gadgets Man? Let me have a quick look. Make sure did that's... Did you hook it. him up with a YouTube Joe, link? I did. So, Joe the Gadgets... Gadgetsman.com. I think that's what it is. Joe the Gadgets Man.com. Is that him? Yeah, there he is. So, yeah. So, Joe the Gadgets Man.com. If you want his YouTube page, he's looking for subscribers. Hopefully... You can find him. It's joethegadgetsman.com forward slash YouTube. I did this redirect. Let's hope it works. Put me on the spotty. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. So joethegadgetsman.com forward slash YouTube for his YouTube. And uh, Jordan, you can catch his songs. Just search up Jordan singing and you'll find some. <laughs> Thanks, mate. No worries. Thanks, mate. <laughs> um, and, uh, that's yeah, lightning, lightningcrashes.com is my tribute show. It's been a while since I had a gig, so if you want to book it, Book it. <laughs> All right. You, you might be able to uh, share a stage with Nolsey. You know, learn, learn a few um, <laughs> ways of uh, entertaining well, funnily, the crowd. Funnily enough, my drummer's name is Noel, so that yeah, works. Well, you see Nolsey going off at the person I in the did, crowd? He, threw, he, he went nuts. Someone threw a pot at him or something. Yeah, I don't blame Nolsey. Good luck, good luck to him. You know, the, the, you can't go throw, throwing full cans of beers at people. Well, why go to the concert in the first place if you're not going to go there and enjoy it? Mm. Well, there's Noel's. You know, I, had a mate, I had a mate years ago, long before I started doing any DJing or bands or anything. I was a karaoke host, believe it or not, years ago. And I heard stories of this other karaoke host who worked for the same company I was working for at the time. He went to a gig and it was at a football club and they gaffer taped him to a light tree and threw stubbies at him and took over the karaoke console. <laughs> <laughs> 
can you believe it? How nasty people can be. Yeah, it's rubbish, isn't it? But they took over his took over his microphone and karaoke di- and discs and everything, and kind of gaffer taped him to a light tree and said, "Nah, we're doing it." You yeah, right. Oh, nice. But yeah, yeah, you see some crazy things. People get a bit crazy. With a few drinks, but he got a bit full on. But he, you know, he's, any exposure is good exposure. Oh, yeah, I guess so. All right, we better get out of it. So Joe didn't come back. We'll find out what happened to him next week. <laughs> He's in that might have dropped. Uh, in the last few minutes before, yeah. we, before we go. All right. Well, thanks for coming in, Jordan. It's uh, been another good week. Good show. Thanks very much. No worries. Thank and you. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for downloading. Get us on the YouTube. Don't forget the Aussie Tech Radio. Get us on iTunes, uh, wherever wherever you want. Wherever you want. You can get them on the videos also on iTunes if you want the video. Uh, I think, I don't know if I, well, look, if you want the video RSS feed, email me and I'll give it to you. But it is through the iTunes. Um, yeah, Joe's just messaged he's lost the internet for some reason, so he says goodbye, so that's alright. So we'll say goodbye also. So we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching and downloading. We appreciate it very much, and have a good week. Go the Sharkies, New South Wales won the series. Bad luck about uh, the third game, but anyway, there's always next year. So uh, <laughs> go the Sharkies. See you, Jordan. See you guys. See everyone. See you, mate. Have a have good, good weekend. Bye bye. <laughs>